when we analyze the transshipment problem, we found that the simplex algorithm would always generate an integer solution because the problem had some property. All the vertices of the constraint polyhedron were integer. Unfortunately, it's not always the case. But maybe if we take a general mixed integer linear problem, we could actually shrink the constraint polyhedron and try to make sure that all its vertices are actually integer. In that case, the simplex algorithm would solve the problem as well. This would mean to add more constraints that would exclude only fractional solutions. These constraints are called valid inequalities if they are actually included by the modeler, or they are called cuts if it is included by an algorithm. And in this video, we will see one family of such cuts that can be actually derived from the algorithm. In integer optimization, the same feasible set can actually be characterized by several different polyhedrons. In this example, we have 12 feasible solutions. And if you look at the representation on the right, you have the exact same set of feasible solutions, but characterized by a different polyhedron. And we can continue. We can find actually an infinite number of polyhedrons that would characterize the exact same feasible set for the integer problem. Now, if you look at the last one here, you realize that the vertices of this polyhedron are integer. Therefore, if we use this polyhedron instead of the other one to represent the problem, solving the relaxation would immediately provide us with an optimal solution of the original problem. Take the original problem P and solve its relaxation. Use the simplex algorithm. It provides you with an optimal tableau. And let's assume that this optimal tableau corresponds to a fractional solution. So we have not solved the original problem yet. What we would like to do is to find a valid inequality, a, a cut, which means a constraint that would shrink the polyhedron, so exclude some fractional solutions, but keep all the integer solutions feasible. The top part of the tableau is actually a modified version of the constraints of the problem. So the constraints are a x equals b. In this case, they just happen to be pre-multiplied by b minus 1. I will assume that my vector x star, which is decomposed into the basic variables and the non-basic variables, is numbered in such a way that the basic variables are the first variables. It will make my life simpler for the derivation of the result. And I know that this is equal to b minus 1b, and this is equal to 0. Let's now write this constraint using this decomposition into basic and non-basic variable. So I have b minus 1b times xb plus b minus 1n times xn equal b minus 1b. Of course, this is the identity matrix. The entries of b minus 1n are the entries that we find here in the tableau directly. Let's take rho i and column j of this tableau, and we denote by alpha ij the entry here. It means that for rho i, we can write the corresponding constraints as xb i plus the sum over all non-basic variable of alpha ij times xj is equal to x star b i. So here I have used the fact that b minus 1b is the optimal value of the relaxation problem. Finally, I have made the convention that my variables are numbered such that the, all the basic variables are the first one. It, it means that the highest basic variable is also the highest variable. So I can write xi plus sum of j non-basic of alpha ij xj is equal to xb star i. And this equality is true 
for all x which is feasible. The only thing I have done here is to take one constraint of the problem and to write it differently using the entries that I can find directly in the final tableau. This is a valid constraint of the problem. Now I will run it in order to try to find a cut. If I take a feasible solution for the relaxation, it is positive. It means that I have a linear combination of non-negative numbers, which is equal to a non-negative number. Before, if I round down the coefficients of this linear co combination, so if I calculate the value of alpha ij round it down to the near nearest integer, I will, on the left-hand side, find something which is lower. This will generate this inequality. Again, this inequality will be verified for every x which is feasible for the relaxation. Now I need integers, so what I can do is to round it down again. So if I round down the left-hand side and the right-hand side, the inequality will continue to be valid. So this inequality is valid for any x which is feasible for the relaxation. But now let's consider uh, x which is integer now, the one which are feasible for the original problem. If x is integer, this expression here is also an integer. Indeed, it is a combination of integer values, either because x is integer or because this is integer by design. Therefore, we, for x that are integer, we can ignore the the rounding down here, because it is an integer. So rounding down, it gives exactly the same value. This constraint here is valid for all x that are feasible for the original problem. Indeed, we obtained it by first finding a constraint that is feasible for all solution of the, the relaxation, and now we have added the fact that x is integer and we have obtained a valid inequality. So this is valid for each integer solution so of the original problem. This is called the Gomory cut. The name comes from the first researcher who proposed that valid inequality. Now remember that I want two features for valid inequalities. I want that all feasible solutions continue to be feasible when I add this constraint. So we just proved that all integer solution verify the constraint. But I would like also to shrink the polyhedron. So I want to show that some fractional solution will be excluded by this. And actually, I'm in a configuration where after solving the relaxation problem, I found an optimal solution which was fractional. Because if it was not the case, I would be done. I would have an optimal solution for the integer problem. So if x star is a solution of the relaxation, Therefore, we need to look at what happens to x star with respect to this inequality. x star is the solution of the relaxation, so in that case, we know that all non-basic variables are equal to zero for x star. So therefore, if we write this constraint with, for x star, we have x i star less or equal to x b star i rounding down. But because of the numbering convention, the i's basic variable is also the i's variable. So we have that the value of x i star is less or equal to the same value rounded down. But this is possible only if x i star is integer. Indeed, suppose that x i star is equal to 2.2. .2, the constraint would mean that 2.2 less or equal to 2, which is not correct. So we have shown that the Gomory cut excludes x star, which is the optimal solution of the relaxation problem. Therefore, it's a valid cut. All the integer solutions are feasible. 
the verified inequality. And there are some fractional solution, in this case, the optimal solution of the relaxation, which is excluded by this constraint. In this example, the optimal solution happens to be here. Therefore, both variables are fractional, and I can calculate two Gomor Gomori cuts. One is represented here, and the other one is represented here. You can see that in both cases, all the feasible solution of the integer problem are still feasible. And you can see also that the new polyhedron is smaller. In particular, the optimal vertex here is excluded in both cases. The idea of Gomori cuts is to exploit the structure of the optimal tableau of the relaxation problem in order to identify the valid inequalities. These inequalities are additional constraints that are verified for all integer solutions, but they are not verified for some fractional solution. It means that at each iteration, each time you add a new constraint like this, the constraint polyhedron is made strictly smaller. And at some point, all the vertices will become integer, and the simplex algorithm will be able to find the optimal solution. <laughs>